let's start with a fair warning. This video can be a little bit longer. So welcome to another video in the JavaScript series. I hope you have enjoyed the series so far. And now we are in the portion of the series where we start to do some of the basic projects. They're pretty fun. And due to that, this video can be a little bit longer. So bear with me, it's gonna be very much fun. Now, first and foremost, we need to understand some basics of it. And before even doing that, I got something for you. So I am giving you some of the exercise file with the attachment name as proj1. So if you're watching it on my website, just look at the attachment in the resource. If you're watching it on YouTube, just go to learncodeonline.in, look for the JavaScript course, the latest one, and you're gonna find that in the lecture attachment. No, there is no GitHub or anything like that. I always keep my attachment just attached with the video so that anybody can just click and just download it. Okay. So this is the proj one we have. First and foremost, let's see what we got. So this is my VS code. I'm gonna drag and drop proj one here, and there we go. Now, in case you have visited Learn Code Online, you might have seen another feature on the website where we have certain number being displayed, like my YouTube subscriber or anything like that. And number doesn't just load in a flash. It keeps on changing the values and then after a few seconds, you keep some numbers scrolling and then you see the one. This is a very common thing to be done and you don't need any plugin or anything to do that. It's a couple of lines of JavaScript and that's pretty much it. So no need to put extra load on your website for these simple tasks. Okay, so what's inside this project file? Uh, we got this index.html, which has a container. Inside the container, we are having an image, an h1 tag, a paragraph tag, and script tag is loaded. Of course, we have some bit of styling as well. In the dark mode, we are having some white color and that's pretty much it. In the script, we got nothing at all. So if I open up this onto the live server, if you don't have live server plugin installed, just make sure you install a live server plugin on VS Code, it's by Ruthwick Day, so please go ahead and install it. And this is what we got. Now this is a great way of showing your followers of Instagram or followers of YouTube, but I want this one to be automatic when I hit a reload it shouldn't just say me thousand, it should be a number which keeps on increasing and then it stops the thousand. It would be super fun to have. In order to do so, we need to study these two things. So there are various time events on the JavaScript you can do. And they can be a little bit confusing to understand. The two that we're gonna study here, the first one is gonna be set timeout and another one is gonna be set interval. Okay, first and foremost, set timeout. Have you played football or basketball? I'm pretty sure one of the other game or maybe cricket. So in all of those games, there is sometimes player says, hey, timeout. Whenever the timeout is being called, just after that given period of time, nobody does anything. And once the timeout is over, then you resume the task or do the task, whatever is assigned to you. Similarly, the timeout is almost like a game timeout. You define a millisecond that how much timeout are you taking once that timeout is over, then you do the function or whatever you have mentioned in the function. I'm pretty sure you're gonna never forget this timeout now. Then another one is the set interval. Set interval is a little bit different. It just says, give me the millisecond. It's again, almost like a game. So for how much duration the football is being played? Yes, exactly. That you mentioned up here, milliseconds. Of course, not milliseconds for football is ideal, but let's just say we define the time and during that time, people or the players actually keep on playing the football. So I hope these anatomy or these comparison uh, with the games are gonna help you to understand and always remember the set timeout and set interval. Okay, so first and foremost, set interval is gonna be helpful in keep on changing the number uh, till we reach the thousand. So that's the plan actually right now. Now let's go ahead and try to have a bit more approach here. Now, so far, we have seen that if somebody gives me these class name, I can select that element pretty easily. I have get element by tag name, I have get element by class or get elements by class, and I can grab it, no problem. But we saw that in the get element by ID or these values, it gives us an array. And in the first value of the array, the zeroth element, I go into inner text. That's also a great way, there is no problem in that. But if I right click, and I first reload it up here so that it loads nicely and hit inspect. I'm gonna go into console, clean everything. And now let's just say I simply go ahead and say a uh, number. Uh, we're gonna call this with as a counter, which is a better name. But let's just say we call it as number. Now, instead of saying that I want to use a document dot get element by ID, I'm gonna say another one, which we didn't discuss in the last video. 
I'm going to say I'm saying query selector, not query selector all, but query selector in this case. The query selector is a bit more like jQuery. No, we are not inserting jQuery here, but it's almost like selecting an element via jQuery, which we used to do in earlier days. Inside the double quotes, you can mention the element like h1. If the element is having a class, like in this case, we do have a class here, notice the counter. So you can mention the class name by using the dot notation, exact same notation works here, or the selectors works here, just like it works in the CSS. So I can simply say counter. If this would be an ID of counter, I can say hash counter. So again, classes, IDs, and the tag itself all works in the query selector. And the reason why most of the professional people like to use the query selector because of the what output it gives me. So if I hit enter here, notice what's stored inside my number. It just stores the entire h1 tag here. So that is much more easier than digging up things from the array. And I can anytime can come up say number dot and I can find out the inner text and it gives me a thousand value which I can manipulate any given time. For example, if I just say number dot inner text is gonna be equal to a new string now, which is gonna be Hitesh, and I hit enter, and now it is being changed. So modification is super easy once you grab a hold of that value. Okay, quite a lot of theory, I know, but it's fun, okay. Now let's go ahead and try to do all of this, not through here, but actually through the code files. Okay, let's go up here and what we're gonna do now is let's hold up or open up this script.js. We're not gonna call this one as number, uh, but surely you can go ahead and call it up, but we're gonna call this one as counter. Again, the same, we are gonna simply say document dot query selector, not query selector all, please keep that in mind. And inside in here, since I make a lot of typos, I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this counter. Go ahead and there we go. Now hopefully this counter is storing that and I can access counter.innerHTML anytime that I want. Or even you can just have a dot inner HTML at the moment. It's totally up to you how you want to store a reference of the variable. And I'm gonna use a shortcut here which is shift, option key and the down arrow to get a duplicate of the line. And this time I'm gonna grab this followers. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna say followers are gonna be stored just like this. Told you, it's really simple. Okay, now the, another challenge in front of us is I don't want to just say that something like this, hey, the counter dot inner HTML is gonna be equals to uh, something like thousand. I can surely go ahead and say that and this is gonna just say thousand or if you just want to say for a reference change thousand and one, it's gonna directly say that. We don't want to do that. And this is where two of the methods that we studied so far uh, comes in set timeout and set interval. Okay, now let's go ahead and first take this set interval because that's gonna give us this illusion of numbers being changes. Not illusion, actually numbers are getting changed, but okay. So first and foremost, we're gonna simply have a count which is gonna start at one, that makes sense. And now we're gonna use this set interval. Again, set interval takes two things. First is a method which you want to execute and the second one being uh, at how many interval do you want to keep on repeating it. Let's just say for a thousand, thousand millisecond makes sense. And here we know that we can pass on a method but we are also now aware about these callbacks. So why not to use callbacks? Let's hit enter and say that all I want to say is every time you are gonna run this one, it's almost like a loop. So we're gonna say count is gonna be plus plus and we are gonna call this one as counter dot inner HTML or inner text, inner text is good actually, inner text. And inside the inner text, we're gonna go ahead and say the value is gonna be count. Let's see how we are doing with this much of code. We go back here and surely it is changing but at a turtle speed, which I don't like. So let's increase this up. How about having a hundred? And uh, yep, fair enough, fair enough. But how about a 10 millisecond? And yep, this is more over like it. Or probably how about one millisecond? Let's see, every time, yeah, this is even more, I'll, I'm liking it, but it is increasing like infinite. There is no stopping because there is no, no end of the numbers. It's gonna keep on increasing. So obviously we need to put up a check. How do we put up a check? We use a simple if and else conditional. I want to say that if the count is actually less than or equal to 
thousand. I don't want to go beyond that. And we're gonna just paste all of these lines previously. Now, as soon as it the, th the count gets above the thousand, then it's gonna say, hey, I don't know what to do. It's not gonna do anything because right now, if the if condition is not met, there is no things written up here. Let's save that and see what is happening. So numbers keep on increasing. As soon as we reach 1001, uh, we get that. So again, uh, my bad, shouldn't be, because we're starting from here, so I think it should not be 1000, it should be just less than 1000. Okay, that will make sense, my bad. Totally missed the logic there. Okay, so we got 1000 followers. Okay, that's great. So this is the one advantage of what we got. Now, let's just say we want to do furthermore. We are having right now that says followers, but I want to say followers on Instagram. So as soon as the number changes to 1000, then I want to say it 1000 uh, followers on Instagram. So this time we don't want to say directly. We want to execute this thing after a certain time. So timeout comes in. So let's just call the set timeout. Again, same things. It requires you to pass on a function. So there we go. This is your function. Yeah, surely call back, but still a function. And when you want to say it, I want to say it after three milliseconds or three seconds in this case, 3000 milliseconds. Let's see and test it out. I'm not sure what number is gonna go. This is on the go everything. We already got a reference of this followers. So we're gonna simply go ahead and call this uh, followers. And the followers is gonna simply say, First and foremost, let's go ahead and grab the inner text. And after some time, we are gonna change this text to followers on Instagram. Did I wrote it correct? Nope, Instagram, with an exclamation, of course. Let's go ahead and see it. Let's go ahead and hit a reload. So it's keep on increasing, and as soon as the three seconds is completed, it says followers on Instagram. But the thousand was not complete, so I'm gonna change it to a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna say five milliseconds maybe. Let's go ahead and check it out. I just want that when the thousands are complete, then it should say followers on Instagram. Now it's really difficult to match the exact timing. We do have ways of doing it, but yeah, that's what we are having. So we're gonna just try it one more time. Just let's hit a reload and there we go. Now we are seeing all of this as thousand increases. It says thousand followers on Instagram. Right now this is all getting a bit of jittery. Surely we can add more properties, we can add more of the styling as well so that it smooths out. We can even add transition properties so that it actually eases out after a certain seconds that whatever we have mentioned. But surely that's not the point. We have done like kind of enough basics in this particular co uh, project and that was a fun. Now again, do you really want to be dependent on some kind of third party libraries uh, just for this like what 15 lines of code? Probably not, this is not even a 15 line of code. So as I told you, vanilla JavaScript is much more powerful and much more faster and even lightweight in majority of cases. Surely in certain tasks, it can be really unnecessary code if somebody already is having a great library for that. But even for these tasks, having a dependency on the library is not something that I recommend. But again, it's up to you if you want to use third party or now you got the knowledge of it, which one you want to pick up. So again, all the exercise files are attached in this video at learncodeonline.in. Feel free to download it, enjoy, make sure that you do some modification and changes. And as a simple assignment, please, please do it. It's gonna be helpful for you. Don't use the query selector. Just try to have a bit of practice through the inner HTML or get element by ID. This is just for your own practice, but make sure you do this. Uh, try to just delete off this entire code and write this and write it through get element by ID. Just click a photo, tag me up on Instagram, and I would love to see that what you are building up. That's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next one.